Hey everybody, I'm Ryan and I run the infrastructure side of things here at LogDNA. In today's video, we're going to show you how to send logs to LogDNA and then how to invite your team members to see those logs. So let's get started. In the top right here, you can see that there is a help menu uh, in our LogDNA viewer that allows us to actually see the instructions to configure various options for sending logs to us. In the Overview tab, you can see a number of different icons that you may recognize, some for Linux distributions, some for platforms, and some for languages. We support a number of different ways to get logs to us. Uh, in the, the agent-based uh, collectors, you can see that they are installed on various operating systems, for example, Red Hat or Ubuntu, or even Mac and Windows. Uh, the platforms we support are numerous. Uh, the ones that we'll be focusing on today will be Kubernetes. Uh, you can also send us logs via syslog forwarding, and those configuration instructions are available for a number of different clients. And lastly, if you want to send precise lines of code and logs to us, you can do so by using one of our code libraries, uh, such as ones for Node.js, Java, uh, Golang, you name it, we have it. Um, so let's go dive into the Kubernetes instructions. You can see here that there are a couple different commands that are listed that we're going to copy paste and run using kubectl. The first one creates the agent secret, which is the ingestion key, and that's used to authenticate your logs to your account in LogDNA. The second command creates a daemon set that actually monitors the log files in Kubernetes and forwards them to us. Simple enough, so we're going to copy paste these two commands and run them in a terminal. So I'm running Minikube, so after I run these two commands, you can see the secret was created, and then you can see the daemon set also was created. So let's go back to our logs here, our screen, and we should see logs appear here shortly. And you can see here that logs have started flowing in, and you can see that there is a pod here, or an app called Log, or a source called LogMe, that is sending us timestamps. So not terribly exciting, but it shows that uh, kind of just how live our logs are, and they're kind of just flowing in here, and you can see we also picked up logs from the agent itself, so you can see what it's doing. It authenticated with the API, and then it's continuing on to, to forward logs to logs.logdna.com. So this is pretty cool. So I'm actually going to go up to the top here, and I'm going to open one of these lines, and you can see that there's a number of different line identifiers available. Uh, these allow you to sort of see where it came from, what container it is called, the name of the namespace, as well as labels that are associated with that Kubernetes resource, such as, you know, this one is the app, is called Logging Agent, and then the image hash. So these are all not only available for you to see and get context around the line, but you can also search on them, and we'll go into them in more detail in another video. So now that you have log lines inside your, your app, uh, you can now uh, invite team members to go view them. So let's go over to the settings menu, this gear icon on the left, and then to the team members option here. So this page allows you to invite team members, and I can invite someone here by email, so for example, greg at logdna.com, uh, and I'm going to make him an admin and make sure he gets an email so he knows that he's been added. But more importantly, you can actually allow your organization to be discoverable and not just invite individual people. So in the settings tab of the Manage Team Members page, you can see at the top there's a discoverability option. This allows users with an at logdna.com, or in your case, your domain email, to discover and join your organization. If you turn this on, when people log in, if they have an at logdna.com address, they'll be able to see and join your organization. In addition to this, you can also enforce users to use Google Apps or Google OAuth to sign in only, if I disable this option for local sign-in. And you can also allow people to, uh, members using OAuth credentials from other providers like GitHub or Heroku. But I'm going to disable that since I use Google Apps. So. This is a pretty cool way to allow users to organically discover and join your organization and start viewing and collaborating on your logs. And that's all for today. Until our next video, see ya.